The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins, for God's mercy endures forever. Indeed, this is true. Welcome. I am Pastor David Schultz. I'm pastor at the Winterstown United Methodist Church. And welcome to this Ash Wednesday service. It's a little bit different than our normal service. I invite you to enter into this Lenten season with worship. Let us pray. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you have formed us. And from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Without you, I fall apart And you're the one that guides my heart And Lord, I need you, oh, I need you Every hour I need My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am. Is Christ in me and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me
Hear these words from the prophet Joel in the New Testament from chapter 2, verse 1 and 12 and 13. Sound the trumpet in Jerusalem. Raise the alarm on my holy mountain. Let everyone tremble in fear because the day of the Lord is upon us. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. And from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 20 through chapter 6, verse 2, we read these words. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Before the empty tomb and glorious resurrection, before the scandal of the cross, before Palm Sunday, the calling of disciples, and all the wonders of his ministry. Jesus traveled first to the wilderness, to the solitude and desolation of rock and sand, a king above kings experiencing the hunger and destitution of man. And when the time came for temptation, despite 40 days of deprivation, the Lion of Judah stood firm, confounding every attack with the power of his perfection. In this season of Lent, we share in his sacrifice, not to experience anguish or to portray a counterfeit righteousness, but to draw closer to his holy presence. We withdraw from our distractions. We cast aside treasures and possessions, forsaking all that would separate us from His love. In this desert, He is the source of what sustains us, the joy in our surrender, the peace that surpasses all understanding. He is our hope in Lent. If you were to page through the Bible and read through it, you're going, to, you're going to discover something, that there's a consistent theme there. It is the call of God for his creation to return to him, to return from ways of living and thinking about God that, are, that basically deny that God is a present reality in our world. For some, that even God exists. And these ways continue to enslave us in patterns of living that keep our connection with God either weak or, for the most part, non-existent. It's a call to return to a pattern of life that is open to and makes room for a regular, life-giving relationship with God who desires for us to join Him or on an adventurous journey of life lived in his eternal kingdom, where God is in charge. The Apostle Paul calls it a marvelous gift, a gift of kindness offered to us by God through Jesus Christ. For it was through Jesus that God came personally to be the gift of redemption, to be this marvelous gift, to be the abundant life that we all desire. Jesus came and lived a holy and blameless life, free from sin and filled with love and compassion for all persons, even for those who rejected him. He demonstrated this through healings and miracles, but also in the way he received people, 
people who were caught in patterns of sin and destructive living, he welcomed them. He showed them mercy and allowed the truth of their lives to come to the surface as he talked with them and, and shared time with them and as he even ate with them. And then he offered them a new path of life which he empowered and blessed. It was as if Jesus was calling it forth out of the darkness into the light of day. You know, this is a mercy we all need. And as Paul, for as Paul reminds us in his letter to the Roman, Romans chapter 3, verses 20, verse 23, he says, For all have sinned. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Now, I assume that that's nothing new to you. Even if you're listening to this and you're not a Christian and you've never heard anything about the Bible before, there's something that you know about yourself, right? You know that you aren't perfect. No surprise there. But the good news is that God does not expect us to be perfect. Now that might be a surprise to you. For God knows that all of our efforts to stop sinning to stop doing wrong things and to be a better person don't work. As one person said, you can't stop sinning by trying to stop sinning. Believe me, I've tried, along with countless others. We cannot be the person we need to be to know and connect with God by our own efforts. They always, always, always fall short. So we need God to join the picture to get into our situation. So the answer is only in God, who came personally to enter into our story, to do life with us, and then to redeem us on the cross by putting our sin to death in his very being. But know that there's more than Jesus dying on a cross that is needed for us to know our redemption. Yes, it's, it is settled on the cross, but for us to know it, there's another holy peace, whole peace that we miss often, so often. We need to meet and walk with the risen Christ and to know him as Lord and Savior who makes this new life real to us. This is why this season of Lent is so crucial to us. It causes, calls us to pause and to become aware of how we might be living our lives on autopilot. You ever, you ever think that? You're just going through the motions day after day after day after day and next thing you know you're deeper in a rut. It invites us to enter into a time of reflection and examination and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal what areas of our lives in which we still need to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ and be surrendered to him. We call this basically spiritual growth. And it's often something many of us avoid, partly because we don't understand how it works, and, but mostly because it requires that we allow Jesus to engage us and to bring to the surface the stuff of our lives, often stuff we would rather would remain hidden because we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to work, we don't want to work on what it reveals to us. So it can be tough. But it's often very, very, very rewarding. Paul tells us in our scripture reading that God's word to us is this. At just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. You know, God's heard your cries. He's felt your pain and he knows where you struggle in your life. Where you struggle in making a connection with him and, and realizing a meaningful and blessed life. The day of salvation is always today. Some of you may need to know the saving work of Jesus Christ in your life for the first time. And you can do that right, right now. Nothing special is needed. All you really need to do is, is to say, Jesus, if all this is true, come make yourself known to me. Forgive me and set me free to live in your love and your grace. And then to foster that relationship and, and let Jesus lead you into a new life. Something that we all need to know is that salvation is not a one-time thing. It's a continual journey of walking in the way that leads to life. 
I like what one theologian many years ago uh, answered when he was asked if he was saved. He's, he replied, I am saved. I am being saved. And I have yet to be saved. Which means there's always work to be done in which the Holy Spirit is joining with you in this whole process. So in other words, we can't fall into the trap of thinking we've all arrived and that we're all good. Jesus reminds us that only the Father is good. Our task is learning daily how to walk in the goodness, the beauty, and the truth of the kingdom of God. Only then can we know that we are a follower of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul tells us, indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is always the day to choose to live a life that reveals that salvation is a mighty force within you and that you are indeed a friend of God. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early church observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. It became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence of forgiveness and were restored to, the, to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and of the need we all have to renew our faith. So I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now bow before our Creator and our Redeemer. Almighty God, you've created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign to us of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Normally if we would be here in person I would be inviting you to come forward and to receive a mark of ashes either on your forehead or, 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 on, or on, on your wrist. It's a reminder that as we put ashes on us that we are mortal that we shall die. And as the, and as the uh, saying goes, and we, we, when it, that is word, as the words who are, that are pronounced over us uh, say, that you are dust. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And that you need this connection with God. So at home, I invite you to symbolically make that sign of the cross, either on your wrist or on your forehead and repeat these words to yourself. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let us come together in a time of prayer and confession. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. And now may the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance and forgive your sins 
and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. And now let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Sin, my cross, my shame, rising again.
I invite you to worship this coming Sunday, the 21st. We will be joining in an in-person worship. We're looking forward to that. We haven't been doing that for, for two months. If And remember that the service is a blended service. It will begin at 10 a.m. If you're online, don't go looking for us at 9 because it will be live. It won't be on until 10. So we invite you to worship with us either in person or online. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Be in his peace.